Welcome to the section in Science Platform. I'm Dr. Meera Asmi. I'm working as consultant to Government of Kerala. And I'm the managing partner of Broadway Events operating in Kerala. So uh, in the previous sections, I mean, I understood the uh, stages of life cycle of an event management company. We identified certain crucial aspects uh, the, from production side to marketing to promotion side. Now we will get into more insight about the key aspect of uh, any organization that is human resource management, uh, the critical uh, aspects with respect to human resource development, what are the aspects involved in this, and then we'll slowly move on to how to attain total customer satisfaction to through total quality management. And finally, we'll identify some basic concepts related to business ethics. So this is a lesson plan for now. So without wasting any time, we'll go for the slide share. So human resource management according to Dessler, as, an, uh, as a definition, it's a process of acquiring, training, appraising, compensating employees and of attending to the labor relations, health and safety and fairness concerns. So it is basically you are planning for the requirement of manpower planning, you are actually acquiring a sufficient manpower to your organization, you're giving them educate training, you're appraising their performance, their comp you're compensating for the uh, work they undertake in your organization, and you're going to make sure that they have very good labor relations within the organization, the health and safety are being taken care of, and the fairness concerning every employee is being considered. So that is our definition, beautiful definition given by Tesla in this regard. So this human resource development is something like a subfield which is coming under human resource management. It is actually the process of enabling and empowering human resources in an organization. So the empowering and, and, and uh, you know, like uh, engaging them, uh, engaging the human resources in an organization is basically what comes under the purview of human resource development. So coming more to it, so it starts with the man manpower planning. So as an event management company, you have to determine the manpower requirement for specific positions and assign roles to each employee after careful analysis of their policies and goals. So uh, as an event management company, you need to have a heterogeneous team of uh, crew members who, who are specialized in their own, on their own area of uh, specialization. So you have to plan how many uh, people are required in each and every, uh, you know, like department, each and every uh, planning organization. So based on that, you plan the manpower accordingly and you start with the recruitment mm -hmm. selection and placement. So what is recruitment? You know, like recruitment is a process of searching for adequate number of applicants for a particular job. So it begins with a clear specification or understanding of the manpower needs. So you, you have a clear understanding of the manpower requirement at a particular point of time in your organization. And based on that, you are actually looking forward to have um, applicants uh, who are suitable for that particular job. That is what you understand by the recruitment. Selection is a process of gathering information for the purpose of evaluating and finalizing the candidate for short and long term appointment as desired by the candidate and the organization. So it's a uh, it's a process by which by which you are evaluating and finalizing the uh, candidates um, based on the recruitment campaign. And, uh, you know, like you can assess the past behavior of the uh, selected candidates so that you can predict their future behavior in the organization. You can identify critical job requirements in this regard. You can use effective interview techniques to select the best uh, candidate from the lot, and you can uh, supplement it with more interview information. So this is how you undertake a selection process in your organization. So placement refers to the assigning rank and responsibility to the selected candidate. So uh, there could be, you know, like someone like uh, volunteers or contract staff for the events apart from the core uh, crew you have. And so here in placement is nothing but you are actually assigning responsibility and you know like a, a job profiles to the or to each and every particular candidate in the organization it is generally assumed that the volunteers are individuals but for large scale events voluntary bodies willing to participate could be identified for example if you are coming up with a government event or something like that you will be having so many ngos or other volunteers will be very happy to associate with you 
but for uh, you know like uh, other corporate events or something you can have interns or volunteers which uh, uh, on an individual level who will be uh, very happy to associate with your event management organization so uh, when you uh, talk about the recruitment and selection process you have to uh, bear in mind that the candidate suitability uh, has uh, has to be ensured how is it going to ensure that you are, the candidate is particularly suitable for that particular position so there can be two methods like you can actually hire a fresher uh, in this regard with who is having the basic qualification uh, needed for this particular position and then you can actually uh, you know like uh, train that particular person to perform that particular task in the organization or else you can actually look for a professional who is having a professional and educational background in this regard whose expertise can be straight away used for your organization. So it can be done in either ways. You can recruit a person and then give them um, a training in order to suit your requirements. Or you can hire a person who is having sufficient experience in this regard, whose expertise can be straight, uh, straightly used for your concern as well. So once they are recruited, they are selected, uh, the selection campaign is over. Uh, you have uh, you are given them uh, um, adequate training uh, in order to suit your requirements. Now comes the performance appraisal and the development. So performance appraisal is nothing but a systematic evaluation of the performance of employees and to assess their potential for further growth and development. So you are actually monitor monitoring the uh, performance of each and every employee in his particular position. And based on that, you are actually assessing their potential for further growth and development options your organization so what are the advantages of uh, um, of uh, this campaign so based on the performance appraisal the employee determines which employees are to be promoted demoted or fired uh, so uh, how well they are performing in the organization will determine whether they have to be promoted to an upper position with more responsibility or whether they have to be demoted uh, um, uh, to a lower task because they are not competent enough to handle more responsibility or finally if you want to fire them well ahead you can go ahead because you know like it is based on the performance of the individual employees so the supervisors are able to uh, frame training policies and programs so based on your performance appraisal of each and every employee you can actually you know, plan some kind of a training um, a requirement for these employees to make them perform better in the task it also helps to analyze the strengths and weakness of the employees to design new assignments for efficient employees so the organization's strength and weakness can be ascertained and based on that the employees can be developed in order to uh, make them uh, you know like uh, make them uh, um, reach new goals of uh, um, uh, coming to attain the new assignments ascertain the future development programs for the employees all the future development programs can be ascertained based on the performance appraisal of the employees determine the compensation to be given to an employee so the package the 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 take home package the um, the the amount that is you're going to spend on the employee uh, so that can be de determined based on the performance appraisal so the better communication and greater motivation and, and, and employees can be ensured through performance appraisal so coming to the employee compensation it is a payment um, uh, given to the employees for the um, work they undertake in the organization it is closely associated with uh, uh, the employee satisfaction it can be mostly in cash but you know it can be a combination of non-monetary benefits also such as, such as uh, health insurance child care uh, vacations uh, paid vacations from your organization uh, so uh, you know like uh, the organizations and business uh, they have their own comp uh, their own employee compensation policies which attract retain and motivate their employees so how well you, you are compensating your employees for the uh, work they are undertaking for your organization is very critical so being an, a small enterprise unit, you should un, uh, involve a satisfactory employee compensation system by grading jobs. You can formulate wage, wage skills for each employee specification. You can propose effective means of encouraging and rewarding employees for better performance. You can, uh, this will be acting as a, uh, uh, you know, like something for uh, employment stability. So another term to be coined in this regard is motivation. It is derived from the word motive, which means need, desire, want, or drive of an individual. So motivation basically stimulates, energizes, and enables the people to achieve the goals. It can be um, both the individual goals as well as the organization goals. 
So there are various factors that seem to stimulate people's behavior at work. And it can be for desire of money, desire for success, desire for recognition, job satisfaction, teamwork. So these are different factors which are actually going to stimulate the people's behavior at the workplace. So all these can be intrinsically motivating, like a, a success factor or recognition. These are intrinsically motivating factors, with, uh, whereas desire for money or, you know, like uh, some kind of uh, recognitions in this uh, in this regard, you know, like a higher pay or appraisal, uh, you know, like you are getting a paid compensation, something like that can be an extrinsic factor. So a fundamental component of the event manager skill is ability to motivate his or her staff. So basically, you have to uh, come up with a with a motivating package which will be exclusively uh, important to motivate your team and retain them in the organization. So what are the advantages of motivating employees at workplace? Uh, employees work for the growth of the organization. So it is mandatory that the people who are actually working for your organization should be motivated enough to uh, put their best efforts. You have to improve the level of efficiency of the employees. Uh, so motivating them is very important. Motivating leads to achievement of the organizational goals. Uh, it leads to stability of workforce. The more motivated the employees are, the more empowered the team is and the more profitable and successful the business is. Because in an organization like an event management company, what is more important is a team effort. So in order to ensure better team effort, what is more important is that every individual employee should be motivated enough so that they contribute to the team and that will owe to the success of the the organization so motivation will lead to an optimistic and challenging attitude at workplace uh, uh, to motivate employees individuals and team goals should be carefully linked to the performance so every activity every activity at the individual level or at the term, uh, team level should be uh, linked carefully to the performance so that will ensure that they are performing up to the mark and that will add up to the productivity of the organization as a whole so this can be achieved through uh, recognizing good performance through verbal acknowledgement. You can acknowledge uh, any kind of, uh, you know, like notable contribution by the um, uh, by the employee. You can uh, ac verbally acknowledge them. You can give some monetary benefits or fringe benefits. You can give sufficient training and skill development that will enhance their skills at the next level. It can um, involve job enrichment. Job enrichment means within the profile of your current position, more responsibility are getting added to that particular position, which is actually a motivating factor because you, know, you that employee will feel that, okay, I am being important in the organization and that's the reason why more responsibilities are coming my way. So thereby enriching their job and job rotation, like, you know, in order to uh, catered to the needs of uh, you know like not to uh, safeguard boredom you know people will be actually working uh, on a particular platform they can get bored so you know like rotating the jobs you know, in a team the uh, role plays uh, get changed that becomes more interesting for the uh, employees so media recognition mechanized tickets post event parties recognition certificates badges memorabilia etc 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 all these can be motivating factors for your employees Next important task is communication, which is very important because communication is nothing but passing of any kind of information one, from one person to another through a medium that is called communication. There will be a center, there will be a medium of communication and there is a receiver. So it involves a center who will be sending the information to the, um, to the receiver who will be responding accordingly. So effective communication is one of the most basic requirement to run an event management company and also to develop positive attitude among the employees. So communication is essential for effective supervision, effective staffing, coordination and control, which is very, very essential for industrial harmony and peace. So the lines of communication down the hierarchy and from side to side is necessary to ensure that the information gets passed around the organization quickly and not restrict itself to hierarchical communication. So hierarchical communication is important at the same time side to side communication is also important because it ensures that everybody in the organization is on the same page. That is very important and there should not uh, there should be no distortion of any kind of communication in this regard. So besides effective communication within the organization, effective communication with external stakeholders is important. Like uh, for example, the creditors or the money lenders or the funders in this regard, they will be, um, uh, the communication with them is also very important. The communication with government agencies is very important. So any other external stakeholder is also important. Also, the messages used to promote an event have a very significant impact. The message you give through that particular event is very, very important. That actually adds up to your 
brand value. Next is a very important uh, topic in this regard. That's a total quality management. It is a management approach approach to long term success through customer satisfaction. See, customer is the key mantra. Customer is the god. Customer is everything. So, how you can ensure that long term customer satisfaction can be ensured? That is possible only through total quality management. Not, uh, not the quality of the management. Entire management in the entire essence has to be taken care of in order to ensure that the total quality of the management is at par with industry standards so tqm can be summarized as a management system for the customer focused organization that involves all employees towards continual improvement so in order to ensure that each and every managerial aspect has to be taken care of in order to ensure good quality then that is possible only through employees who has to continuously improve. So total quality management is directly proportional to continuous, in, um, continuous improvement from the uh, improvisement from the part of the employees. So there is no single part to achieve total quality within an organization because all the organizations have their own culture, people and technologies. So there is no, uh, there is no uh, just a single way through which you have to, there is no hard and fast rules as, as how to attain total quality management. It is basically depending upon the organization you have your own culture you have your own people you have your own technology mechanism so all these will actually contribute effectively towards attaining a total quality within the organization so guidelines for a total quality management customer focus customer is god customer is everything so that is a thumb to that has to be followed a customer will ultimately determine the level of quality so what what must be understood is that the external um, uh, customers that is uh, the um, uh, that is uh, clients as are served by the internal customers that is the employees so there is a need to focus on requirements and expectations of both internal as well as the external customers the, the clients have to be taken care of the client needs are being catered by the uh, internal um, uh, customer that is your employee so maintaining a balance between your internal customers as well as external customer is very important that is very crucial so the total employee engagement all employees work towards a common goal so total employment commitment can be achieved only if management is able to provide an enabling working environment to all its all its employees so everybody in the organization should be in the same page as far as the organization is concerned it should be always process centered it should not be people centric but should be proper a process center so a process is a series of steps where inputs from the supplier whether internal or external are transformed into outputs that are delivered to customers which can be internal or external so you know like um, the steps that is uh, needed to be carried out at, at the process level has to be defined accurately the performance measures are to be continuously monitored so in order to detect any kind of unexpected variation existing in the system there is something of the leadership commitment. Leadership of our organization must be committed to the continuous improvement of the followers. This commitment should be visible all throughout all the layers of the organization of the management. If the management is commitment to provide right tools and systems, employees are likely to excel at what they do. So there should be a perfect balance between what the management is rendering to the ex employees and expecting out of the employees and how the employees are responding back to that particular need. So there should be an integrated system. TKM focus on interconnectivity between various departments and integrated system ensures that all departments understand the vision, mission, and guiding principles, as well as the quality policies, objectives, and critical process of an organization. So they work in coordination with each other to achieve the business success. So every organization, there will be different departments which will be working individually and in line with all other departments in the organization so there should be a proper connectivity between all the departments the employees working in different uh, different uh, departments there should be proper networking all this will add up to the integrated system wherein all the departments understand the same vision same objectives same uh, modus operandi of operations so everybody in the organization will be on the same page there should be a strategic and systematic approach that is strategic planning or strategic man um, management which includes formulation of strategic plans that is a long term plans integrating quality as a core component there should be room for continual improvement it's a TQM is a process of continuous improvement so it drives an organization to be both analytical and creative at the same time this enables the organization to become more competitive and effective at meeting clients requirements 
Communication plays an important role during stages of organizational change as well as part of day-to-day -day operation. FT communication is very important. It's crucial in maintaining morale as well as motivating employees at all levels. So it involves uh, strategies, methods, and timeliness. So training and uh, development is very important because through training, management ensures that they have employees have necessary skills and technical knowledge to perform their uh, jobs effectively. So they have, uh, every organization should have different uh, uh, staff development policy, progression rules, comprehensive uh, training programs, uh, like investors in people. You, you know, like, uh, through training, you're actually investing on the employees. You're actually making an investment on the employees uh, for which you are ex expecting fruits or uh, fruits of you know, uh, Access in return. So when you are investing in people, you have to target that the quality is getting in, enhanced. That is, that the quality of the human resource uh, working in your organization are getting enhanced. They are becoming well trained, well motivated, and well managed staff are getting groomed up. This leads to a public recognition of the enterprise as a whole. So directing these and, and awards after achieving a goal or successfully completing a task or important task. Giving recognition is actually going to add a further participatory uh, morale from the part of the employees and it actually motivates other employees to work up to the mark. So the final topic in this regard is regard to the business ethics. Why ethics is important, you know, like values and ethics are very, very important in order to ensure that you are in the right track. So in when it comes to business, it becomes more important because you know, like you are actually an organization or a business business entity is um, is staying alive in the in the in the industry only for satisfying certain basic human needs. So you have to be very fair, honest, and ethical in order to meet to the requirements of the human needs. So creating credibility is important because you know the um, it is our uh, organization is always believed to be driven by the moral values as respected in the society. So this is a far held perception, and why um, so um, you know like even people who are not involved in the organization will actually have a perception about the credibility of your organization. So for that you have to maintain the ethical standards. Uh, uniting people and leadership because uh, um, workers with organization has to go a long way in order to achieve the common goal or mission. So improve decision making, all decisions are driven by, by values. If, uh, if the organization does not value its employers, then it cannot actually cater to the needs of the customers. The long-term uh, gains, organizations are guided by ethics and values which are profitable in the long term. Though in the short term, they may seem to lose money, but uh, if you stick on to ethical standards, that is going to add value to your organization and that will um, lead to more profitable ventures in the future. Securing the society, often ethics succeed in law in safeguarding the society. The law machinery is often found acting as a mute spectator in his endeavor to save the society and the environment. Any business is existing only for the benefit of the society. So the society has to be benefited and you know like uh, uh, the ethics, ethics um, uh, stands as a safeguarding mechanism to safeguard the interest of the society. So that is for uh, this section, uh, this module on uh, business um, um, marketing, uh, managing a business, uh, business enterprise, uh, managing an event management organization. Uh, so we understood that all the important, uh, uh, crucial aspects uh, from uh, the, uh, you know, like uh, different stages of life cycle of an you know, event management organization. Uh, to how important is uh, the production, operations, marketing, promotional activities, uh, how important is the human resource management in the organization, the importance of communication, the importance of compensating your employees effectively, the importance of motivating your employees, how to maintain a balance between your client requirements as well as um, enhancing the quality of your workforce. Uh, so the training and uh, recruitment section, training and uh, performance appraisal has been covered as part of the study. Then you understood in totality how we are going to enhance the um, brand image of your organization through total quality management. And finally, the most important thing, maintaining ethics in the organization. How important is business ethics in an organization? So with this, I'm sure that the learners have got a very great insight into the into how to manage a business um, uh, event management organization. Uh, so on a, an on an ending note, as a learning now uh, section learning assignment for this particular module, you can actually come up with an uh, with a uh, you know like a, a very brief description about your activities and you can make a note of how you're coordinating with different departments in this regard from production 
to marketing to um, uh, you know like communications to uh, uh, quality management to ethics standards how you are maintaining everything with respect to your event management organization you can keep a note of it you can prepare a, uh, a, a prepare a case analysis based on your event management company and analyze it from different viewpoints thank you so much for your patient listening this is dr meera signing off from the swam platform thank you for your uh, patient listening thank you for your coordination thank you so much mm -hmm.